Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. DTCC that settles $1.2 quadrillion in derivatives has early indicators for T plus one settlement time. You're going to like it. We got that and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, $1.08 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is flat. Let me refresh this, see if it's changed any here. Nope, still flat. 25,600 plus for Bitcoin and Ethereum 1624 and change. Tether market cap is 82.7 billion plus right now. XRP is 49 cents, off by 0.4 on the 24 hour and off by 4.8% on the seven day ladies and gentlemen let's get started right here you want to become your own alternative to banking it's gold and glint pay baby that's how you do it they've already done it and you know what if you're looking for a way to beat inflation put your assets in the most trusted store of wealth it's gold glint pay enables you to keep your assets in gold but spend it like money with their mastercard debit card Thrilled to back Glint's visionary journey, and so am I. And you know what? You can get the private equity for Glint at Link2, along with all the other amazing products that are available in companies. Do not mess around. The stuff doesn't last long. And I tell you, the prices for the private equity on Glint are just amazing right now. Click the link. Get on Link2. Get yourself some private equity. You do have to be accredited, but I know you're out there, and I know you all hear me. But I can tell you this. If you're not accredited, and even if you are accredited, you want to get your own alternative to banking, this is very, very real, ladies and gentlemen. And we know that we are headed towards a transition from the traditional financial system to a new financial system. And nothing, nothing brings me the kind of real peace that Glint Pay does. I love having my own alternative to banking with Glint. Click that link. Look right here. This is Cindy Young from Ripple. Excited to grow our university partnerships across Europe with the addition of four new universities to Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative, UBRI. Trinity College in Dublin. Remember, they also filed for a payment license in uh, Ireland. And IPETA in uh, France. And it says IE University in Spain and University of Trento in Italy. This is exciting, exciting news to see the expansion of that because now you see more of these initiatives going through the universities. You're educating the people who are coming up to get degrees and want to work in certain fields. This is where it starts. It's unbelievable. I love seeing this. And take a look at this. Cowboy.crypto is back, baby. So Ripple is partnered with the U.S. Faster Payments Council, whose founder, Ken Kruska, is also head of products at Amazon Web Services. Now Ripple's UB BRI that we just talked about is partnered with ANU, whose board member is also at Amazon. Probably nothing. You take a look at this and you can see there's all your connections right here. You're looking at them. I'm telling you, you know, these things are remarkable. And I tell you, the people in this space, the XRP community that do research are just incredible. I mean, we, you know, it takes a village, right? From developers to influencers to people who are startups and, and entrepreneurs and uh, companies and, and, their, and their attack and approach in this space and how they innovate. It takes a village, I tell you. And this is just remarkable. Uh, one remarkable uh, person out here that is just crushing it all the time. Thank you to Cowboy.Crypto. And here we see the U.S. Department of Treasury and the IRS. Uh-oh, everybody tighten up. You heard that, didn't you? Have published a proposal for cryptocurrency laws outlining brokers' reporting obligations. So if we go into this very quickly here, it basically says the regulations will begin uh, being implemented uh, on 
uh, or on or after, excuse me, January 1, 2026. The regulations require U.S.-based brokers to file information returns with the IRS using the new form 1099-DA. The brokers will also be required to provide payee statements to customers. The U.S. Department of Treasury and Internal Revenue Service have published a proposal for cryptocurrency laws outlining brokers' reporting obligations. So if you ever wanted to know what's coming, I could tell you by 2026 that brokers are probably going to be selling digital assets, whatever's left of them at that point, right? I mean, you know, you're getting a signal. What are you getting a signal? Did the IRS say that they're not going to allow it? Or are they now making the... Uh, uh, allowance for it and putting in the protocol on how to file based on offering it as a broker. Look, this is, uh, it's exciting to me. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Shout out to Ron Hammond and Blockchain Association for the update here. But I wanted to say here with stable coins in a holding pattern, the FIT Act, as we know, has taken the lead on the educational front. The market structure bill is a dense piece of legislation. And even the members who work on these issues regularly admit it is a lot to digest. Still, the bill prog progressed with decent Democrat support. Now, we know that there has been a lot of talk about seeing a stablecoin bill passed by the end of this year. If we see that, and along with that, we also see, as Pomp has suggested here on uh, Fox, the announcement of approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs, uh, you know, by the major players in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the finance world. Take a listen to this quick clip here. We may get some answers when SEC Chairman Gary Gensler testifies in front of lawmakers next week. But until then, here to break it all down and maybe give us a sense of whether it could happen is Pompliano Investments, Anthony Pomp Pompliano in studio in a Fox Business exclusive. Great to have you here in person. Thanks so much for having me. Finally, you're not in a, a TV box <laughs> hidden away. I'm glad you're here. Uh, first of all, what do you make of Grayscale's latest win and then the letter that was sent yesterday, is the pile on really happening? Yeah, the, the great part about America is when there's disagreements between market participants and regulators, they go to court, they lay out their arguments. These are high priced lawyers on both sides that do the best they can to convince a judge uh, who's right. And the judge came down and they sided with Grayscale in this situation. Uh, now what the SEC has to decide is, are they going to allow this conversion? But that's not the only part that they actually have to evaluate. They also have to look at the fact that you have other ETF applications that are out there. And so it's kind of this great rate do we get the GBTC conversion first or do we get ETF applications? I tend to think that we don't want to have a financial market where regulators are playing referee in the sense of they get to choose winners and losers. Instead, what we want is we want regulators to create fair markets. And so from my personal perspective, the best thing to do would be just approve them all at once. Say GBTC, you can convert BlackRock, ARC, uh, the other filers, Vanek. everyone gets to go. One, two, three, go. Whoever gets the assets gets the assets. Because part of what we've seen in prior ETF applications that have been approved, whoever gets out there first, they get the assets. Yeah. And there you have it. And take a look at them. BlackRock, Invesco, Wisdom Tree, Fidelity, Vanek, Bitwise. You're talking about scooping up the assets, creating scarcity, right? And demand for the assets. While also, if these spot Bitcoin ETFs are approved, providing exposure through the ETFs to the investor under a regulatory framework for ETFs. That's the whole beauty of this if it gets approved. So this could send the market into a real bull cycle. There's no question about it. Couple that with the idea that we could get stablecoin legislation possibly by the end of the year. Those two things alone could really, really send things crazy. Now take a look at this. It's Cypress DeMonacore and his research team over here getting it done, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to these connections here. It's remarkable. Take a listen. You all remember how a month ago I showed you how the Digital Euro Association, the Digital Pound Foundation, and the Digital Dollar Project was brought together in August on the 3rd, particularly to discuss CBDCs and privacy, and how that was all in collaboration with Ripple, right? <clears throat> now, if we head over to the Digital Euro Association LinkedIn profile, this was posted two days ago, as you all can see right there. And it goes on to say on August 29th, so this is updated, we gathered online for a thought provoking discussion. The event kicked off with a keynote speaker by the Digital Euro Association providing valuable insights into the status of the Euro CBDC. 
Our exclusive roundtable provided a platform for members to exchange ideas, share industry developments, and discuss pressing topics. Attendees included esteemed DEA community members, partners, key policymakers, financial decision makers, and external financial sector experts. Now, let me show you all how important Ripple is because guess what? Ripple was there, ladies and gentlemen. If you click on this little tiny broadcast that they had posted, check this out. Anthony Welfare himself right there. And you know what? Listen, I, I have to say, you know, first of all, shout out to Cypress to Monocore and everybody over there on his team doing all the research. It's they're just crushing it. And I love highlighting the community, too. I really do. You know, we've reported on all these things. But think of it for a moment. Uh, Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Euro Association, the Digital Dollar Project, and then Ripple's there, too. Somehow, Ripple keeps showing up in the most important places. You don't get to be where Ripple is by accident. You get there because you're a part of the solution. Don't believe it. It's still true. Here's a look at an image that has been uh, worked up here. It is a 100 banknote of BRICS currency and a design option that's being considered. It is not yet released, as we know. But we do know in January 1, January 24, uh, we're supposed to see five nations join BRICS. Uh, that is a remarkable number. And we know of those five, Iran, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia would bring 80% of the world's oil production into the BRICS coalition. We know that they do have a plan at some point in the future to launch a BRICS currency reserve note. So we're watching closely. It's going to take some time, but keep an eye on it, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's take a look at this. Shout out to Big Skinny on this one. Now, I don't know if most of you remember this, but we covered earlier, I think it was earlier this year, might have been in 22, but I think it was 23 early on, where the SEC, including Gare Bear, that's right, Gary Goldman Gensler, and the rest of the voting staff there, had voted to indeed work on using such solutions as distributed ledger technology to shorten the settlement time that it takes to settle derivatives. And they are working on those things and have been since that announcement and that vote went through. The DTCC, which settles uh, over $1.2 quadrillion in derivatives, remember that Ripple joined ISDA, the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, to help with that. Well, this just came out yesterday. Again, shout out to Big Skinny here. Early indicators point to T plus one testing success. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, it does not say Ripple or XRP inside of this. So you can go ahead and take that off the table. But what we have to be watching for is knowing that Ripple join ISDA for which the DTCC is a part of. Because they do settle the $1.2 quadrillion worth of derivatives. And you have to wonder what role could Ripple be playing with all of this that is taking place. The industry's T plus one testing window designed for full end to end testing formally kicked off for the first 21 bi cycle or bi weekly cycles in August 14th of 23 early indicators from this week or from the first week of the program have begun to filter in with numbers showing a vast majority of top industry firms already accessing the environment, uh, and testing that T plus one related changes made to their respective systems and processes. While T plus one testing is not mandated by the industry group or by regulators, DTCC has been carefully monitoring all interactions with testing environments since it opened in mid August. DTC is an established internal dashboard to track how many firms have been accessing the test environment and, and the types of tests and scenarios they are running in the first week of activity. And you could see here, it says 100% of the largest 30 NSCC clients have already connected to the test environment and begun testing. 90% of the largest 10 ITP clients and 55% of the largest 30 ITP clients have begun testing. 70% of the largest 10 DTC clients and 15% of the largest 30 DTC clients have begun testing. 
They said, we cannot emphasize this enough. Robust and coordinating testing will be one of the most crucial or critical success factors. This is all coming from Michelle Hillary, the DTC uh, General Manager of Equity Clearing and DTC Settlement Services. We're extremely encouraged to see such active participation and engagement with the T plus one test environment in the first week among our largest clients. And we are optimistic that the numbers will only continue to grow as testing extends over the next nine months. So there we have a window on the testing there, which is over the next nine months. So extremely exciting to me. I hope it is to you. And hopefully we learn more about what it ends up being as far as Ripple's role, knowing that they are alongside of R3 to help settle that 1.2 quadrillion in derivatives. Keep it coming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm loving where we're at here. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.